Hello and welcome. Great to meet you virtually speaking. My name is Chad Outen. I'm director of My Learning Space. We're an Australian online learning services provider. Our aim today is to help your organisation improve its learning efficiencies in about half an hour or so. We'll start with a brief appraisal of online learning and follow that with a demonstration of some of the key features of the Totara learning management system software. And uh, naturally we'll, we'll allow time for Q&A at the end. Um, we'll, uh, we'll unmute mics if need be, but uh, look, along the way feel free to use the, the chat function and we'll incorporate any questions or comments as appropriate. Being mindful that you may have to or have already had to devise a business case for online learning, we'll start with a rationale. In today's economic and political climate, organisations of all shapes and sizes are seeking ways to become leaner, more productive, meanwhile minimising cost. To that end, one of the strongest arguments for online learning is that it does help organisations achieve more with less. Web-based learning management systems such as Totara represent an excellent return on investment relative to traditional face-to-face, same-time, same-place learning. Um, one of the reasons being is uh, that financial and human resources can be more efficiently allocated. Less travel translates to less time out of the office and more time for staff to focus on core business. So it is all about not being bound by time or place, so that means Anyone, anywhere, can learn or be trained about anything at any time. So the, you know, think of training and learning and development without boundaries. It's quite exciting. This diagram illustrates what a learning management system or a good learning management system might look like. You can see Totara has been dropped in the center of the cloud the cloud represents the internet in this case. It's built upon internet-based technologies and infrastructures and any good learning management system will enable resource sharing. So items such as documents, presentations, multimedia can be shared by online course participants. A good LMS also allows collaboration through tools such as blogs and forums, wikis, instant messaging and naturally we need to be able to measure the achievement of learning outcomes through assessment so items such as quizzes assignments and tracking and reporting features they're important as well in a good learning management system software so we as users can access the LMS via the internet um, from a variety of devices so not being bound by a time or place we can go certainly beyond desktop computers and laptops. A good LMS software will also let you access it via a smartphone or a tablet device. Okay, well here's our roadmap for today. And perhaps a little overview of where, where we're headed. In case you're not aware, Totara is a corporate distribution of Moodle. And Moodle happens to be the world's most popular learning management system. Uh, Totara has been designed specifically for workplace learning and assessment. So it's kind of Moodle plus some wonderful features that are ideal for be it, uh, the corporate sector, government departments, registered training organisations in particular. So it has a, a great range of features uh, that will enable you to facilitate training programs um, in an online, a face-to-face, -face in a blended environment. You'll be able to personalise learning via individual learning plans and programs. You'll be able to match learning to fit your organisational structure so you can match the complexities of potentially an ERP or a HR system or another system within your organisation 
um, against your learning management system. You'll be able to manage teams of learners and naturally assess, track and report on competency, achievement, learning and development. Okay, I've, for the purpose of the demonstration, I've logged myself into a test instance of Totara. This is version 2.2, fairly plain vanilla uh, at this stage, but of course it is highly customizable. So uh, we can brand the learning management system according to your corporate requirements, your specific requirements in terms of actually a logo and the header, colours and fonts and styling and icon sets and so forth. Um, you'll see if we go to the settings block, site administration, appearance. Incidentally, we're seeing the system through the eyes of an administrator at the moment, but we will, we will toggle to other views so you can see what a manager and a learner get as well. If we go to theme selector, Themes um, are synonymous with templates or skins uh, that you might be familiar with in other systems. But Totara is clever in the sense that it enables um, device detection. So it's clever enough to know if the end user is connecting to the LMS via a default device such as a laptop or a desktop computer, um, a mobile or a tablet, and to serve up a theme that is optimised for that sort of device. Okay, Different devices with different um, screen resolutions. Um, we'll need a theme that's optimised to that end. And also legacy, uh, a legacy device. In the case of an end user connecting to your LMS with an outdated browser, say for example Internet Explorer 6, we still want to be able to give them a usable experience. Um, so we would come in and select the theme from the range of themes that are available, different colours and styles and icon sets and layouts naturally. Uh, with this custom theme that we've got at the moment, uh, we would be able to go via a graphical interface and very quickly adjust some of its settings such as the logo, the favicon, the colour of links, background colours and buttons and so forth and even drop some, some CSS code. Um, in the box there at the bottom if that was appropriate. Okay, so we can do all of that via the, the administrative interface without requiring access to um, files located on the server. So just returning to, I'll use the breadcrumbs to navigate to the front page again, just to show you a couple of things in terms of the general look and feel of Totara. Naturally, we've got some tabs across the top here that kind of tile vertically into sub elements. The tabs will vary depending on the user and the role they have within the learning management system. So administrators or people with reports or people who are managers of teams may see different tabs or elements on the said tabs. So we've got also these square things called blocks. Um, they can easily be expanded or collapsed, and there's naturally sub elements sitting within each of those kind of in a nested way. And we would follow the link to go to a particular location or to perform a certain function. We can dock the blocks. So we click the little blue area to move the block to the dock. I'll do that for these others as well. So you get the idea. Each of those docks into kind of a vertical strip on the left side of the page that kind of declutters. The given page and you can mouse over the block and expand the elements within it. If you want to put it back it's more or less the reverse process so we click the blue icon to move it back or we can move them all at once we undock them all like so. Okay as far as what a course looks like to give you a quick look and feel of a course a bit like the cooking show this was one prepared earlier so we've got blocks, it's sort of a three column layout. We've got blocks on the left and the rightmost 
portion of the page and we have the content in the center section so these could be organized into topics or weeks and um, naturally we've got titles or headings and we've got activities and resources of a learning nature situated within them okay down the page so the user could scroll there's a few different ways we could serve these up naturally if we click this little box to the side we can just show topic or section one and all of the other topics are collapsed into a jump to menu alternatively we can reverse process to show all topics so we get that expanded view back we'll use the breadcrumbs to return home Now, I mentioned before being able to map your organizational structure to the learning management system. If we go into site administration hierarchies, we'll get some sort of a, an idea of that. So, we've got a positional framework here that's been built already. So, by way of example, we have a project officer in, I guess, the manager position. And working beneath them, we have a tech support employee position and a software developer employee position. So similarly for HRM, we've got trainer and administrator. And the L&D manager has an instructional designer and online facilitator role under them. So you can build this positional framework. We can do a similar thing for organizations within your LMS. Let's face it, some of us uh, work within fairly complex organisations. So we want to be able to map that structure to our LMS. So again, by way of example, we've got the IT area. And within that, we've got the service and support group. And within it, the service desk and desktop support team. And then we've got some other areas with their respective groups and teams as well. So where that comes together, as far as users are concerned, if we browse users, and we'll look at this learner in particular, the user profile tells us a bit about them in terms of who they are, where they're from, what courses they're enrolled in, when they uh, first and last access the system what they're interested in and so forth. And we can send them an instant message from this page. Down the side here in the navigation block, if we go to positions, we can populate a primary, secondary and aspirational position. Or if we open up the system, we could in fact let, uh, let a manager or, or the, uh, the end user themselves put the information in here. The idea would be we've got a few fields toward the bottom um, that could be populated according to the frameworks we, we just had on screen there before. So the idea would be you would choose the position from the framework or frameworks available, and OK it, and likewise for organisation. And if appropriate, if this learner was reporting to a manager, you would select that person from, from the list of users. We can have a start and finish date and a description for any of these positions as well. And then we would simply update it. But the idea behind that is we've, if we define positions and organisations, we, um, we can bulk assign learning plans or programs which are sets of courses to, to users instead of it being a one-size-fits-all approach. And on the same token, if we assign a manager to a user, um, that learner becomes part of a team, and the manager can oversee and monitor um, and track and report on uh, their progress. So that's hierarchies, just in a, in a nutshell. Just as a little aside, with competencies, of course, competencies are goals, 
um, synonymous with goals or key performance indicators, if you like. They're really the measure of learning and development. So Totara allows us to build competency frameworks. You can have one or one or more. And by way of example here, we have the health and safety area. Within that, we have the management unit. That's one of several units. And within that, that particular unit, we have these competency descriptors. So here's an example one, the prime responsibility to take all practical steps. That's, um, if you like, it's one performance criteria. That's one competency that the learner will need to demonstrate in some shape or form. Over to the right, we've got a column for evidence items. So we've got a number there beside that first competency. So if we click the number one, we can see on this subsequent screen, health and safety, the health and safety course is linked to that competency. So, what's, so what um, the relationship there is, if the learner successfully completes the health and safety course, the LMS will indicate that they have achieved this particular competency for reporting purposes. Okay, so that's the relationship. We'll have a little look at program management. Of course, we can organise courses into uh, into categories and have programs, um, which is which is a, a powerful feature in the sense of uh, we don't have to single-handedly enrol users into courses. We can we can bulk assign sets of courses to large groups of users. Okay, so we'll come in here and add a new program. Give that program a name. It will be available to students and let's say in terms of availability we'll make it for this calendar year. Description and EndNote are optional but the description might have some more information about this particular program or set, uh, set of courses. And an EndNote might be a congratulatory note or a link to a subsequent program or course that the user will be required to complete. So we'll save the changes there. That's just some general information about the program. We go to the content tab. So we just work our way left to right across the top. So we've got a few options here in defining the, the content of the program. We can add sets of courses and or competencies. Um, we can also set up a recurring course that might be more appropriate in a situation where you've got uh, mandatory training. It might be compliance type training that needs to be performed by all staff on a periodic basis. That would be the way to go. But look, we'll demonstrate how to set up a set of courses as part of a program and manage it. We go add. Let's say this is induction. So we'll add health and safety and orientation. Okay. And we will also add another set of courses to this particular program that might be to do with computer skills. Okay, so we'll give each of these a name, um, these sets within the, the greater program. So it might be OHS, the first set, and we will allow 30 days. They must complete all courses within that particular set. So that's the health and safety and orientation within 30 days. And then it can be then or can be the logic for the subsequent set. So we might say then for computing skills set. And again, it could be all courses or one course within that set. And you specify the number of days. And we save changes. 
So the logic is highly flexible in terms of the courses that we add to the program and the duration. We go to the assignments tab across the top. And this is where we can assign learners in bulk for a, sex, uh, a, a set fixed or relative completion criteria. So we can add either organisations according to that framework or positions, audiences, which are essentially cohorts or site-wise groups. We can add managers or individuals or, or, or all of these things, any or. So if we go with organisations, we go add We'll add organisations to the program. We could then say, right, we'll add service desk and desktop support. And we'll also add some positions to this program. So the, the, the jobs concerned might be tech support and software developer. Okay. We would then set the completion date for each of these groups of people. So they can be set fixed to a completion date or relative to uh, a login. Again, it can vary for each, however we might want it to be. So okay. And then we would save changes. The idea would be users who have a certain position or are situated with, within a certain, say, department, unit, branch of your organisation would inherit this program, this set of courses, upon their next login. So that's the idea behind what we're doing there. It becomes very automated when it, when it has been configured, as I've just demonstrated. And not just uh, the programs, but of course the, the courses contained within it and any evidence items that are linked to uh, competence, competencies that are linked, uh, are linked to the courses. Okay, um, as far as reporting goes, again, this is an administrative function. totara has got what's known as a report builder. This is, a, this is a fully featured, highly sophisticated inbuilt report builder. So we can, we can build custom reports via a graphical interface and save ourselves tens of thousands of dollars potentially. And two types of reports, embedded reports are pre-built and you can see there's a dozen or so of them, good to go. We've also got user-generated reports. So more to the point, these are, these are created by the administrator and then assigned to users of the system by their role and the said recipients can schedule the reports to run on a periodic basis and be emailed to them if they so choose. So look, what we can do down here, we would go new report, we'll give the report a, a name, say course completion 2012, we'll select the, the data source. So it might be information that relates to an audience, competencies or courses, programs, objectives or users, amongst other sources of data. In this case, we're after course completion as the data source. We click the button that reads Create Report. So we work our way across the, the tabs at the top. We go to the Columns tab, 
Columns are much like fields in a report, so we determine what columns to display. We can rename them, we can move them up or down, we can delete them. We can in fact add additional columns or fields to this report. Say for example, the user's email could be, could be quite useful um, and perhaps their manager. This is going to be a course completion report. We could sort um, ascending or descending by any given field or column as appropriate as well. Okay, so the filters tab, next one across the top, is where we uh, would determine which fields display in the basic or the advanced view for this particular report. So uh, other than the user's full name, as we can see at the moment, those additional fields will appear in the advanced view. We'll go to the content tab. Here we control what content gets displayed. Are we going to show all records or show records that match any of the criteria um, or all the criteria below? And that criteria can be specified and that might relate to the user's organisation or their position or uh, what their organisation was at time of course completion. We can show by user and by completion date, past, present or future. Okay, so we can really granularise the results of this report that we'll soon run. And then lastly, access. This is where we determine who will be able to view the report. So the default here is to restrict access, so only certain users can view the report. And we determine by role which users will be able to view this report. So it might be just for the eyes of managers, let's say, and administrators we would save changes. So the report's been built, we can now view the report, follow the link. We can see here we've got along the lines of ADIAC results over three pages. So we've got the user's full name, the course, organisation, position, etc. So that information is all there. We might want to further granularise this report, however, because it's a course completion report and we've also got people who haven't completed. We might not be interested in them. So if we click the button top right that reads Show Advanced, we get the other fields that we can filter by. So naturally we could filter by organisation or position, name of the course, date and so forth. But here we want to filter by Completion status, so let's specify it. Completion status needs to be equal to completed. So our 88 records found initially should be reduced down to one. You can see there. Okay, This can be exported to file, such as a text file or to a spreadsheet format. What we might also want to do is save this search for ease of future reference. So I'll simply say search name is completed and we'll let other people view this report who have been granted access. So that's saved. If we go to the My Reports tab at the top, naturally we will see the reports that we have access to. We could come here at any stage and simply click the link to run them in real time or you can schedule the reports to run automatically and be emailed to you. So we would select the report that's appropriate, add a scheduled report. So do we want all of the data or just that subset? What format? And then how often do you want to be emailed that report? On a daily, weekly or monthly basis and you can also specify the the day and time save your changes
So a very powerful feature there. Um, now questions just come through in terms of being able to integrate or map the structure from an internal system such as a HR system or um, an ERP type system with Totar LMS. Yes, very achievable. In fact, there's a new feature called Totara Sync. Just give you a quick look at it. So, so long as you can uh, push or export a file from your internal system in CSV format, you can potentially sync and map the data from that system to the learning management system. So that could be for organizations, position frameworks, and even the user, and probably in particular, not just the user, but uh, the manager that they report to as part of a learning team. So by way of example, with the organization, um, Actually, before we do the files directory, you would specify the location, um, the, the folder where these files, CSV files, will be put for synchronization. So push from your internal system to Totara. And then we go into the settings. So we look at organizational settings to give you some sort of an indication of formatting here. So we've got the source is CSV format um, in terms of configuring that source file. We're given an idea here in terms of the structure that would be required for that file. And we can actually map fields from that internal system to the LMS. So they meet up. You can also specify what to do with the internal data during synchronization when an item was removed from its original source. Do you keep or do you delete? So hopefully that gives you some sort of indication. I guess we could put the files in that location in an automated sense, or alternatively, you could come in and manually upload the files for synchronization at any point, like so, for organization, position, or user. So that's a, a pretty powerful feature. That's as much as I had in mind from an administrative point of view. I might show you a few things through the eyes of a manager now. So I'll log out as admin, come back in as a manager. Let's face it, we're all lifelong learners and a learning management system is no exception. Um, you could be an administrator or a manager um, responsible for the learning of others, but you still need to take um, ownership of some of your own learning in a formal and structured sense. So in this case, the manager's logged in and they can see courses that they've been assigned and their status um, at this point in time, okay, on a little dashboard here. Across the top as well, they've got an additional tab. Totara is intelligent enough to recognize this user as a manager managing a team of learners, so it serves up this My Team tab. So we go to it, and you can see, through the eyes of a manager, the members of this particular team. So it's kind of, a, I guess, a snapshot page, where you can see the, the team members, links to their plans, profiles, bookings and records, and we can also see their last login, courses started, completed, and competencies achieved, all on one screen. So if we click in to one of these learners, uh, we'll look at the, this learner here and their learning plan or plans. So we can see uh, we've got active plans. Um, plans can be initiated by the learner and may contain courses and competencies and objectives. And or um, they may be initiated by the manager or administrator and then assigned to individuals or learners depending on their position or organization. So the workflow could come from either end or both. So if we look at one here, let's see my learning plan 2013. It looks like a plan that may have been initiated by the learner and it was approved by this manager. There's the overview. Uh, we as a manager could include some thoughts, which is, um, so let's say the plan looks good. And in fact, we had it earlier. 
It's due for completion at the end of this calendar year. If we follow the tabs across the top, we can look at the courses, competencies, and objectives that constitute that plan. And naturally, um, we as a manager can adjust the status, the priority, or the due dates, and include comments where appropriate as well. So that's learning plans. So we can, uh, on the left hand side here, we can also see a record of learning from any given learner as part of our team. Their required learning and active learning. So that's all broken up. If we return to the team member page, we can also look at the learner's profile, bookings, bookings into face to face or offline events, things such as workshops or training events or seminars. So we can set up these face-to-face -face events, and if you like a sort of a booking, a registration workflow within an online course, so learners can sign up and or be approved by their managers, and naturally we'll want to record attendance, maybe export that to file, or report on it, so all of those things are possible. And records, so we can also look at a record of learning, as you can see here, for this particular learner as part of our team, the courses uh, they've been enrolled in, some have due dates, and we can see the, the progress, the status is indicated there by the, the, the coloured bars. That can be exported to file, that view can also be filtered, and if we don't want to look by course, we can also um, look at the record of learning by competency, objectives, and or programs. So I will return home. I'll log out as manager and quickly come in and see the system through the eyes of a learner. So it'll be a different view again. Naturally, there'll be no administrative functions here. They don't have a My Team tab at the top. They're not a manager. They're simply a member of a learning team. Uh, but again, we've got Yes, the progress bar is indicating status toward completion of these courses. We could go to a, um, the My Learning tab at the top. So we get this very functional dashboard looking page. Um, down the centre section we've got an overview of the courses that we're enrolled in that are simply a click away. And things such as assignments that have due dates and might receive grades and feedback, they're indicated there as well. We can have tasks and alerts that are relevant to us as individuals. That's a very personalised page that relates specifically to this learner. We've got other links down there you can see to record a learning, bookings into face-to-face -face or offline events, and development planner if this learner wanted to initiate an individual learning plan and have it approved by their manager. So there's quite a lot going on. Uh, at the top as well, we can find courses, we can keyword search, or we can browse by course category or even by program. We can request a course as well. And lastly, the calendar. So this relates specifically to upcoming training events that uh, may be promoted across your organisation and or those that uh, are of relevance to us as an end user of the system. I might pause the demonstration at that point in time um, and just see if there's any questions or comments that come through from the audience today before I wrap things up. Question there in terms of cost. Um, well, look, Totara represents excellent return on investment. Um, you know, relative to other commercial or proprietary type learning management systems on the market. Um, and if you're evaluating Totara and say Moodle, for example, and you like the functionality you've seen in this demonstration, I think for a few extra dollars, Totara gives you excellent bang for buck. It really punches above its weight. Um, and you'd be surprised. It's highly affordable. It's available under a subscription-based model. So as long as your organisation subscribes, you get access to the software um, 
under a product maintenance agreement. Okay, so it's very polished, it's robust, it's scalable, um, and it's well-maintained software fit for uh, workplace learning and development. And naturally, the decision then becomes an easy one. It's more a case of have you got the capability to fly solo as an organisation and manage the deployment yourself? Or do you engage the expertise of a Totara partner, such as My Learning Space, and we're very well positioned to help organisations uh, who may need assistance with software installation and configuration and naturally hosting, um, upgrades, backups, training and support and so forth. So, look, a bit of food for thought. Confucius was a great Chinese thinker and social philosopher back in about 500 BC. And I really like this quote. Um, and I reckon in the context of 21st century education, his ideas have withstood the test of time. Um, and I think this is what learning should be about. Um, it should be our man mantra for, for learning and development and training in the workplace. So it's let me do and I understand. So it's a very hands-on, experiential approach. User centered. There's some resources from today. The software is very well documented, incidentally. We've got a demonstration site there if you uh, wish to evaluate the software further. And there's our contact details. Feel free to reach out to us at uh, any point in time if you need a quote or you've got a question or you need further assistance to get up and running. We have uh, you know, an excellent learning management system in, in your organisation. As I said, we're well positioned in the Asia Pacific as a Totara partner and we'll be able to assist you with consultancy, hosting, training and support. So thank you for your time today. I hope uh, the session has been of benefit to you and 